Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to uh, do a little bit of tool making again. Uh, in previous video where I showed uh, making this uh, what's called a two-piece vise, two-piece mill vise, uh, clamps down to the mill table. But in that video I said something about this uh, uh, 45 degree or 90 degree uh, I guess you would call this parallel that goes down into in the vise, whole pieces in the vise. I mentioned something about showing making this on video. One of my viewers uh, responded back and uh, asked what video that was in because he couldn't find it. And I got to looking and sure enough I did not video making this. I, I thought I did. Uh, I actually videoed making this uh, horizontal one with the pipes, but I mentioned in that video we were making this that I wanted to make a set of these, uh, a matching set to use on uh, one for each jaw. So we're going to video that today. I've, in this series, I went ahead and did all the material prep off camera. Uh, and I've got two pieces. They started out as three-eighths of an inch by two inch. Uh, I've cleaned them up, surface ground them, and as I was surface, surface grinding the tops, top and the bottom, I made it a point to keep these two together, keep them oriented together. And I've since gone back, and I think maybe you can see I've put little indicators in here. I took my punch set and made a set of set of marks, also marked it with T's for the top. The idea behind that is, or the whole idea of making this set is that they will match. They'll be exactly the same as far as where the uh, 90 degree is in relation to the other one. So from this point on, I want to do all the work on this with these uh, witness marks matched together. And then any time I use these in this vise, I will always have these witness marks pointing toward each other. So this video is going to be about, primarily about milling out, sawing, milling, and surface grinding this 90 degree angle in here. But to be absolutely certain that I keep these together, we're going to go to the mill first. And I'm going to drill these and put some, uh, I believe what I've got here is 732nd spring pins. Uh, just a little spring pins. I'm going to mount them or insert them in each of the two sides here. And that will hold them together. So let's get turned around to the mill. All right, I've got the pieces in the mill vise now. And as you see again, I'm keeping the witness marks pointed toward each other. I've located the center on the X axis. Now I know from previous experience making these other pieces in here, my holes should be uh, 2.530 uh, in between. I'm going, even though these pieces right here are being made for the two-piece mill vise that will set down in this direction. I still want the holes to be the same as, as if I were going to use them in this mill vise, which very likely I will at some point in time. So half of the 2.53 is 1.265. So we'll move over. Now the relationship to the V that's in these two pieces, or the 90 degree cut in here, does not by any means have to be in the dead center. Uh, they just have to be matching each other. Now for the height from the bottom, what I'm going to do is use this one as a template. All right. So that should have our Y axis. I've got this the bottom of this one held up against the fixed jaw. I know my distance on the X is correct and that's going in fine on the Y. 
So I will lock that down. Now I'm going to drill this all the way through. As I say, I'm going to put these pins in, but these pins are only temporary until I get all the work done, and then we'll, of course, pull the pins back out. Now we can go our 1.265 on the other side of zero. Okay, now we should be able to take our spring pins. back over to the workbench and lay out the 90 degree in here. I probably won't try to video that, but I'm just going to lay that out in center. Uh, pretty much a match to this one. Uh, then we'll meet over at the bandsaw where we're going to cut the majority of this out. Over at the workbench, I, of course, located the center. Then use the uh, this uh, protractor here at 45 degree angles to lay out the V. So now we're going to take the band over here at the portable band saw that's on its semi permanent mount, and we're going to stay plenty clear of our line because we're going to want to actually machine down to that line. Last thing I cut on this was some, actually some wood, and as you can see, a whole lot of sawdust is coming out. So I'm going to get the air hose over here, blow that out, try to get some of the sawdust out. It's kind of masking my view of the line. But then I'll continue cutting on this and bring you back when we get a little closer to having it cut out. Okay, that was simple enough. Got our V, 90 degree in there. <clears throat> Hope you can see I stayed off the scribe lines. So we'll go back to the uh, milling machine now and put our grinding relief down here in the bottom and also uh, clean these surfaces up a little bit. Just, just try to get them uh, clean now, flat. Then we'll go to the surface grinder to put the fin uh, final grind on them. Got our work pieces mounted back in the uh, mill vise now. Located the center again. And we've got a 3 16 end mill. And what I'm going to do is come down on this center. Uh, can't go too far, uh, but don't need to go too far. Uh, just enough to give grinder clearance. And this is going to actually hit on this side first before that one because I got a little closer to the line over here. All right.
All right, I think I'm going to make one more cut down, which is I'm taking about the uh, I don't know, about 20 or 30 thousandths at the time. All right, now I'm going to take the work pieces back out, set them up at a 45 degree angle uh, in the mill vise, and again, clean this up both sides to get it ready to surface grind. Here's the grinder relief, surface grinder relief we just put in. All right, now we're ready to set this up at a 45 degree angle and clean these two edges up from the bandsaw. I'm going to use this block that I already have made. Uh, I'm going to set it in there like such. Now what do you do if you don't already have a 45 degree block like this? Well the way I made this one was to use my angle blocks, a 30 and a 15 to get the 45 degree angle, set it up as such without any chips in it. Another way you can do that is with an angle cube, angle uh, block. Uh, you zero it out against your fixed surface and then just keep setting the pieces up and adjusting them until you have, well, it would actually be like that until you're showing 45. But since we got this block, we're going to use it. And as I said earlier, the most important part about all of this is not so much that this V is in the center of this block, but that these two edges are at 90 degrees to one another. That is, that is the crucial part. And for making a set that is a uh, match, <coughs> excuse me, to make a match set, you want that to be, uh, you want them to be, to be matched uh, in line with each other. And again, that's what the pins were all about. Now, I'm not holding a whole lot of, don't have a whole lot of holding here. So I'm going to take this very lightly cut. I've got a, uh, let's see, 11 sixteenths end mill in. Primary reason for such a larger end mill is to have this reach. I need to slow back down a little. And I won't come up. Let's see, we can come down. I'm not going to quite touch this bottom yet. frequency there. All right, that's got it close enough, I think, for the grinder now. Make one more little pass. If you don't have a surface grinder, you can get these blocks close enough doing what I'm doing right here. Uh, for, for the majority of the work that would be done in a home shop, All right, folks, I think when I, let's see, that should go on down to it. Just trying to be sure my flutes are long enough. I'm wanting to get the, the remainder of this side over here. All right, 
now I can come off of this edge just a little. Alright, I know I can get down in there a little closer on the surface grinder. But I want to see if I did get this bottom edge right here. Folks, if I didn't have a surface grinder, I would be plenty happy with that right there. I don't see any light behind coming through at all on either surface. But we're going to go over, get this set up with the same block over on the surface grinder and just give this a good uh, finish. I'm over here at surface grinder now, ready to put the finishing touches on our uh, work pieces. And as you can see, I've got the guard off. If you watch my previous videos, any video where I've been on the surface grinder, I always have that guard on. But there's a reason that guard is missing on a lot of these old machines when, when folks pick them up. And that's because they get in the way a lot. And this is such tight quarters right here. I had to take the wheel off that I had been using and put a new wheel on to have the full width. Uh, this is a wheel that I've got. It's a little bit, a uh, little bit softer uh, material. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, this wheel is even supposed to be uh, usable to surface grind aluminum. But it's the only wheel I had balanced. Uh, on a hub and balance that was full size. The reason I had to have full size, we won't be side wheeling here, but we will need to get up as close to this edge as possible without hitting it. And what was happening with the smaller wheel was this hub up here was hitting the workpiece before we ever got up close enough. Now down here, if I can get you down to where you can see what I'm talking about. On the Z-axis, the end feed wheel, I've got a zero set on it right here. That's as far in as we'll be able to go on our, um, whoops, excuse the bump. That's as far in as we can go right here. So what I'm going to do is, again, just touch off. And I'm probably going to take this slow. Hopefully it doesn't get hot. Uh, if it starts getting hot, I'll turn the coolant on. But I've got so many different things to watch right here. Uh, I do have it at the 45. So let's get a little RPM going. Y'all watch this feed right here. I'll watch the wheel. Okay. That looks like clearance. We'll keep coming down a couple thousandths at the time until we touch off. All right. We'll try a couple thousandths and feed out. I'm feeling just a little bit of vibration in the handle. I may have to check the balance on this wheel again before I use it for anything that's got a, a, a big flat surface on it. touching all the way around now so I'm just going to take 
a thousandths at the time instead of two thousandths. All right, I'm going to take one more thousandths feeding in. There's a tiny little spot right up in the deep part of the valley that's not quite cleaned up yet. I won't go another thousandths. Yep, I think that's going to do it. And to put this in perspective of how much I've had to take off uh, from the end mill finish uh, to a surface ground finish, I believe that was after touch off either seven or eight thousandths, about twice the width of a human hair. All right, I'm going to turn this around in the vise, get set up to get this, this edge over here. Alright, for this side I did reset the z-axis uh, zero and we're touching off a little closer to the center now just for the sake of knowing I'm gonna set zero on my down feed as well just to see how much it does take to uh, to clean it up That was two thousandths on that feed right there. It's not quite touching on the outside. We'll try a thousandths. Again, you guys watch this. I'll watch the dial. computer that wasn't good on this old man my computer sitting over at my desk and just as I was getting up to this edge here it let out a loud beep and uh, uh, I'm glad the camera won't backed out so you can see me because I, I like to jump out of my skin all right that cleaned it up that time and that was six thousandths it took on this side. So what I'm going to do is back on out here a little ways. Be sure you guys are still in frame. And what I want to do is check I want to check to be sure that's 90 degrees and let me see if I can get the camera repositioned. All right, I've got the square set in there now. If we look at it across the bottom, we don't see any light coming out. There is a little light coming out on the edge up here, but it looks the same from top to bottom, so I think I've just not got the, the, uh, the square pushed in tight. But that is... If we turn it around the other way, actually I'm not seeing any light at all. Yeah, just a little faint light there. There may be just a minor bump right up here at this top. I'll probably 
carry that over to the workbench and just uh, uh, put a little extra relief right up here at this top. I uh, may do that on the uh, belt grinder. If it was down in here, I would have to, to grind it on the surface grinder more, but being right up here at the top, uh, it'll be perfectly fine just to take a little relief off up here. Let me try that, and then we'll meet back over at the workbench and recap this. Okay, <clears throat> so now we've got a match set of, I'm going to call these V parallels. They're not V blocks, but they're actually just like a regular parallel to set work on inside of a vise. Remember, I marked the ends, the end of each, one end of each piece with witness marks to keep them matched together. We pinned them together as we were doing the milling and the uh, uh, surface grinding. And the way they'll be used, keeping those witness marks matched up, these can be used in the mill vise with the holes in there. They can be screwed. Uh, I will not screw more than one end in place. I let the other end float. But they could be screwed in place for multiple work pieces. But this is this is kind of on the small side as an example of how they would be used. But as you can see, they set in there just like they were set on parallels, but at this time at a 45 degree angle. And if I needed to get to more than this, these can set on parallels as well. So for the viewer that asked how I made this one, same process. The only thing we did different this time was pin two of them together to make a match pair. Take care. I'll see you on the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.